every success has its struggles. Every dream has its trials and tests. Listen to their stories, because if they did it, you can also be called self-made. So can you share with us, how was it being in Davao? Well, uh, I was lucky. Actually, my parents are migrants also. They came from the north, uh, Ilocos and Cagayan region. So they are farmers. My father is the 12th out of, uh, you know, the 12th, uh, out of, uh, I mean, the youngest out of 12 uh, children. So, and uh, he, you know, he went to school in Manila and a working student, married at the age of 18, and eventually uh, well, seven children, eight, and then 10 eventually. So I'm the fifth. You're the fifth yeah. out of ten. Yeah. But what do you really want to be? At that point, you know, when I went to medicine, I decided this is what I want to be. Yeah. So where did you get, um, you know, the discipline of your parents raising twelve children? Did you learn from them, or? Yeah, it's from my parents. Both of them, as you, you know, they came from a farming family, a farmer. So my my my, my, my father was a working student. So he tells me about the story. Now. Hard it is, have a family and work, but you have to persist, right? Mm. So he said, if you're born rich, you're handicapped. Because you don't know the, the meaning of the work, the meaning of your money that you make. You just waste it. But if you know that you, you work for it. So when I was a kid, if you, if, if you ask for money for other things, except for school, he said, okay, you do this, because uh, there's a gas station next to your house. So give me a, a piece of uh, basahana, no? and then balde, I'm a sa That's what That's I did. That's how you make money. Yeah, so. <laughs> So what do you think, uh, during those times, and this generation, the millennials, the style is totally different. It is. What's yeah. your message to the new parents and your, the, the children? Yeah, I think it's the, you know, it's the, the family values, you know, the, the, how you engender it to your kids as a young kid and be a model for them. Sometimes it's difficult because of the new challenges, you know, maybe uh, people are not as, as fortunate as I am. but. And the key is, uh, again, first of all, to be positive about things. When you're younger, you always have hope. You always believe in, you know, I, you go to church, you have a faith in something. You have to believe in something that is good. You have to believe that you are capable. And then uh, the parents, you know, we work so hard. Sometimes we forget the more important things in life are those that you know, we kind of forget about. Love, caring showing, uh, you know, uh, the positive about things and, uh, and uh, being more resilient, accepting things for what they are and trying to make them better for everyone. What's your biggest regret in life? I was so focused with my work and, uh, you know, uh, I'm really, I can tend to put them aside. But I realized that work is just work. At the end of the day, we go back to it. So what did you learn from the U.S. that you bring back? You know, I learned is uh, sometimes the most important things in life are not really the ones that you're working for. You know, again, it's family, it's uh, caring for other people. I do medical missions for the last, uh, since 1993, every year. What do you think, uh, how can we encourage our co-Filipinos from outside to come back in the Philippines? Before, the politics is, is one factor, the uh, convenience is another factor, uh, the uh, I guess availability of certain things, but uh, I'm seeing more and more Filipinos uh, coming back here, it's because I think the country has really improved a lot. So what's your best message to us Filipinos, what can we do to help the government or Philippines to really rise up to make Filipinos? Well, uh, a lot. Uh, every, you know, I think it's our responsibility as a Filipino uh, to seek the best that we can be. Okay, uh, don't get saddled by some sensational things that might happen here and there. You know, it's like in life. You know, you, sometimes you get you get so caught up in one detail that you're not able to move. You know, you get fixated on something. I think as a, as a Filipino, we have to think as a nation, we have, as, if, depending where you are, we are stewards of resources, stewards of goodwill that we should, again, again get together and uh, yeah, uh, try to make our lives better. We start with our own and then, you know, good as a society. Thank you very much, Doctor, and looking forward to see you more. <laughs>
would like to hear your childhood story. My father was a barangay captain, politician, and my mother's family is also a politician uh, family. And um, my father is uh, uh, one of the descendants of the hero Lapu Lapu. Oh my god. <laughs> and he's from Matansipu. Dang. And uh, maybe I, uh, I was inspired of uh, that story of our great great uh, ancestor mm -hmm. uh, Lapu Lapu. That gave me the, the inspiration <laughs> and maybe the, the leadership skills as early as uh, five years old. What you really want to contribute ever since you were five years old? We're not a rich people, rich family. I have seen uh, poverty, I have seen uh, hunger, I have seen uh, war and conflicts in Mindanao. I want to, to help uh, by contributing on, uh, on uh, making things happen. How can you inspire these children to really rise up to be like you? To really believe and have a vision mm -hmm. for themselves, for their family, for the country. We are blessed that we have a president like President Duterte. And uh, he is one caring president. Mm -hmm. uh, I even call him as a servant leader mm -hmm. because uh, he, he gives uh, focus on how to improve the quality of life of our people. So he may be tough against the criminals, against the drug lords, against those uh, in government who are corrupt because he wants to impose discipline, because he wants our country to become safety and safe and peace and peaceful. Mm -hmm. And because only a peaceful and a safe country uh, can we uh, become developed and progressive. Mm -hmm. So um, every Filipino will no longer be called as a poor, a poor man, that every Filipino family will already be considered uh, to be among the middle class of uh, our families. So that's the dream of President Duterte. We share with him that dream. What do you think the people should do? What will be our responsibility to support you in order to reach that vision? Yes. Uh, one thing that President Duterte is uh, uh, emphasizing to all the Filipino people is for us first to love our country because that is what we lack. Yeah. If every Filipino will show their love for our country, then they are going to protect the country, they become disciplined, they become uh, 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 respectful of the laws, so they become quality people. And this will also attract the investors to come because we have quality people mm -hmm. who are not only intelligent, who, are, who understand and can speak English, mm -hmm. who are hardworking, but also respectful and disciplined. <laughs> Very nice. Are you a proud Filipino? I am a proud Filipino. Why? Oh, uh, first is um, we have everything. Uh, we have everything. Our country <laughs> is so blessed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with these traits, with these character traits, there is no reason that we cannot progress. How you um, manage challenges? How you handle it? That's tough. Oh, first is <laughs> I pray. Okay. <laughs> I pray. Like now, when I give my before I give my speech, I, I say a prayer. Lord, make my make my mind be your mind. My my mouth be your mouth. So I can speak the words that uh, will that will uh, convince my audience, that will entice people to help uh, make the Philippines grow and uh, make uh, our, the Filipino people's lives uh, better and uh, uh, comfortable. So, what's your best message for the children? Uh, for the children, um, always say thank you to your parents because it is not easy to be a parent. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody's perfect, so there is no perfect parent and there is no perfect children or child. So all that is needed is uh, the three C's. They call it the three C's. Uh, the first C is you should be able to communicate because absence of communication is will make you separated even if you are physically at uh, together. Next is you must be able to cooperate. Uh, 
So the children should understand the, the work of their parents. The parents likewise should understand the need of their presence to be with their children also, mm -hmm. provide them some quality time. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third C, of course, always put Christ in the center of your uh, family life, family relationships. What do you think that we should do? How can we make Philippines first world? Provide a good government. It starts with a good government. If there is a good government, a go what is a good government? A government that is responsive to the needs of the people, a government that is efficient and effective, a government that is credible, uh, a government that is clean because it is not corrupt. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. We would like to know more about you. Mm. Can you share with us your childhood story? I grew up in Sydney, in Australia. Uh, <clears throat> I went to a private school there, a boys' school. But I was more of a nerd than I was a sports Nerd? Man. Yes, yeah, an intellectual. Um, I get picked on by the bullies in the class. Right? Oh. And then I then became friends with one of the kids in the class whose nickname was Tank. Tank was twice the size of everybody else. No one ever touched me again. <laughs> so I've always believed in having a tank around, someone <laughs> to protect you, right? Where you are now, is that what you want to be then? Um, I originally wanted to be a surgeon. To be a surgeon. A brain surgeon. So what changed you? I realized that blood scared me. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. to, I can work in Greece, I can't work in blood. So engineering was a similar thing. Okay. Working then, on machines rather than brains. Okay. Uh, <coughs> a similar kind of thing is uh, doctors, brain surgeons, engineers, they're all doing a similar thing. They're fixing things. Okay. Right? They're building things. Okay. Right? So what's your key message for the children right now? Like, so many children, they don't know what they want. I think one of the most important things is it's got to be something you really like to do. Right? You've got to have some aptitude for it. It's no good trying to be something that you're no good at. Mm -hmm. right? Because whatever you go into, you'll be competing with other people, yes. right? Who are, who are good, mm -hmm. right? If you want to get somewhere, you've got to be as good as or better than them. So it's really finding your passion. Finding your passion where you've got a talent for it. Yes. Right? If you haven't got a talent for it, don't waste your time. Yes. Right? Okay. And here, here I think is one of the most important things. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to find a niche, something specific. Don't be too generalized. Don't cover too much. What's something you're good at? What's something that's needed? And I think I think that what comes out of this is sort of in this history is that you you can plan things. But the unexpected is more likely to happen. So you better be ready for it. Yes. Right? So as, as wide a, a, an experience as you can get, as wide a knowledge as you can get, mm -hmm. is well worth having. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is take a risk. Rest. Right? Yeah. It doesn't hurt to take a risk. The other thing that I have always believed very strongly is if, if you don't try, you don't succeed. <clears throat> Too many people say to me, oh, you can't do that. I said, don't, don't even bother. I say, well, if I don't bother, I know I can't do it. But if I try, maybe I can't either. So I have lost nothing. I'm still where I was, but I might succeed. You'd be surprised how many times I've succeeded. What made you really stay in Philippines and you become a Filipino? Mm. A love of the country is certainly one of them. I mean, as, as you've said, I've been here 41 years, right? That's longer than almost all Filipinos. Certainly more than the yes. um, And I love it here, right? I've developed my relationships. Friends are here, yes. counselors are here. You know, my life is here. Yeah. This is where I am. So, do you think Philippines has the chance to be first world? First world is a long way off, but okay. second world, yes, very, very definitely. Um, but, but you know, these things don't happen overnight. We, we are improving. Philippines is better, mm -hmm. but it's come a long way. Now, are you proud being Filipino? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I love this country. You love this country. What do you love the most about Filipinos and Filipinas? The people themselves. Right? Uh, they're, they're wonderful people. Mm -hmm. Very friendly, very confident, uh, uh, very kind. Mm -hmm. Why do you think investors um, invest in Philippines? The easy one is IT, the call centers, right? Call Which center. has been BBO, enormous, yes. enormously successful. Yes. Why? Because Filipinos speak American English. Uh, 
gentle, understanding, and when you talk to them on the phone, you get a good reaction. You feel confident. Cost is, is competitive from anywhere else. That's very important because business is all about cost. Cost is competitive. Uh, the, the, the Philippine the government has put in place, and the private sector, the communication systems, more or less. We need better, but it's, it's pretty good. Um, <coughs> we've got power, we need to have reliable power. We've got buildings, we've got developers, we've got office space to give you the office space, that's been done. Mm-hmm. So those things work. Mm-hmm. How about agriculture? Agriculture. This is a fertile country, good climate, plenty of sunshine, enough rain most of the time. If we put in the right irrigation systems, put in the roads, put in the support services, agriculture is in dismal shape. So what do you want from us Filipinos in order to be considered Philippines first world? Discipline in everything, right? Not just in traffic management, but in the way you think, the way you act, you know. uh, And we have to have initiative. Initiative is not there. I've I've employed thousands of people and they're all very good at doing what they're told to do. They're not very good at thinking it through to do it themselves. And makeshift will do. I get furious when someone fixes something by tying a piece of wire around it. No. Get a nut and bolt, drill a hole, screw it together properly so it will last and it will hang. Do it properly the first time. (laughs) Thank you very much, Peter. We really appreciate it. (laughs)